Yeah, yeah, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where as always, the shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for this evening, Pat Scorpion, the Living Representative, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm letting him introduce himself. Yo, what it do? Ring Dang Radio.com in the building. Spoy Gold Artist, aka Shuttleworth, the guy LB, Lot of Del Boss. Know what it is. Sir, bring gang in the house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what's good? You already know who this is. Your boy King P. Bodega P. Bodega Box in the building. Ring gang radio all day. Let's go. Hey, Bodega P. Straight from the sewer. Except, you know, he was definitely far from the sewer, man. You know, he was in the house today. You know, he was in the house last weekend, yesterday, you know, for you know for this big fight we're about to get into, man. Now tell me, man, the important question. Did you see any rats there and did you stomp them out? Um, no rats there because they would have got stomped out with the quickness. Yes, sir. You know, they would have been left like Teofimo's face. Am I correct? No, nah, probably worse. Damn. There we go. Yeah, just have to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Sound like we talking uh, Darian Tanko after the Golovkin fight worse. <laughs> nah, more like Badu Jack type worse. God damn. God damn, that's... Well, you flash kicked his face, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. See, that's what I'm saying, though. You rats, you better stay the fuck out of our way. You know what I'm saying? When you ever see King People Digging Pete, you better step, you better go crawl back in the sewer where you came from and shit, nigga. Like, you ain't fucking around. You know what I'm saying? Because we hate rats. We hate rats out here, man. Especially the snitching type. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all, y'all gotta be careful out there. You know oh, hold on, hold on. Sh- shout out to Miss 702. Fight was great, man. Shit. <laughs> Yeah, fight was excellent. We are, yeah, you know, trust we, we, we're gonna be raving about some, we're, we're raving about some fights. You know, trust. We were about to uh, talk about the um, Tiafimo Lopez Cambosis fight first. Yeah, because uh, sure. King P was at that. Yeah, sure. and then we just get through our intros. And last but certainly not least, man, I got my other man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, what's fly? It's your boy Conscious Pilot, aka the West Coast Avenger, the number one contender preparing for liftoff destination. We're getting radio. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Hey, Conscious Pilot, you know, stays oven, stays above the clouds. You dig? You know what I'm saying? So it's good. You know, we you know we here on a Sunday evening. Usually we do it. Um, you know, usually do it in the afternoon or whatever. But you know, it was Thanksgiving. You know, hopefully everyone you know who celebrates Thanksgiving or Turkey Day or just a day that y'all just eat. You know, it was safe. It was good. Y'all watch football. You know, talk to your family members. Gambled a little bit. Something like that. You know, talk to your shit with your family members. All that good stuff, man. And then you're still eating leftovers just like I am. And how most people are, man. Uh, so, yeah. You know, like I said, some of us were, you know, were indisposed, you know, during, you know, during time. So, yeah. Evening time. And that's and that's quite all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we always make adjustments, man. Ring gang. We do what we do. You know what I mean? Uh... But yeah, you know, yeah, this weekend was outstanding with boxing, man. You know, it, it like you know when you get when you get two fight of the years, you know that were, that were damn near back to back, you know, and you have a, you also have a couple of great fights, you know, you know as an addendum or on one card, the other card was just you know ambiance, <laughs> you know. It, it makes it makes for a great you know it makes for a great weekend, man. But we're definitely gonna get into this Teofimo Lopez George Cambosis Jr. fight, man, because that shit is buzzing out there, man. Word, let- word. Hold on, we got we got another comment. Told that boy Pilot To would get exposed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Pilot, you know, Pilot is a uh, you know, Pilot is a big supporter of Teofimo Lopez, and I have nothing against Teofimo Lopez, man. He's a, he's a cool cat, you know what I'm saying, but. Yeah, all sides were pointing that he wasn't moving right. And I and you know, I always say the previous podcast too, like, all we need right now to complete this cipher is fuckery. And fuckery is what we got. <laughs> you know, for this, like all the shit that went down. And to think that this shit only came to pass because Tia Fimo and Senior, you know, wanted more money for to do the fight against Cambosis. <laughs> You know, for Top Rank, and now of course we're gonna see how Top Rank is gonna treat them going afterwards because they did revamp the contract. 
but I can see, you know, Uncle Bob might want to make, he might make a little changes to that going forward because, you know, the way since, you know, you know, Chief Fimo lost his belts on a non-top rank platform. <laughs> Damn, but, uh, so um, was, was it worth it? <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what we're going to see. It probably was not, you know. Yeah, Tiafimo, you know, he got himself like well, probably maybe around two and a half million. Well, he got some money because of the fallout from Triller. Uh, I forgot what the amount was, and then he he got the lion's share from from the Zone and Matron, which is I think about two and a half million or some shit. So he got paid. You know, he, he, it wasn't four point one million, but you know, he, he got himself the pay that he was looking for. But uh, it came out of price. It came in. And, and depending how things move forward, it may come at a bigger price, you know. Uh, but we had, you know, but our man King P was up in there last night, man. That was his first, you know, his first duty as a media cat for us, man. So P, man, you know, the floor is yours, man. Tell us your experiences. I mean, man, what a what a what a what a way to pop your boxing cherry, you know, with the yes, media. Sir. You know, that was quite the event to go to. It was, you know. The the uh, you know the atmosphere was electric, especially you know as as the car as the main card started and everybody started filling in. You know everybody started coming in, and you know it's funny because um, throughout the lead up to this fight, all I kept hearing people say was, "Yo, oh, a lot of people was like, you know, well, I heard the tickets aren't moving so well. You know what I'm saying? I heard Tio not selling well. You know what I'm saying? He need to sell some tickets. You know what I'm saying? He need, he need he need to move some move some numbers." Well, shit. Sh- by the main, by the time it was the main event, I didn't see one single empty seat in that building. So, yes, sir. I guess, did, I guess he did a pretty good job moving them seats, selling them tickets. So, I mean, I I ain't never seen so many Honduran flags in my life. <laughs> <laughs> New York, New York, has, low key has has a Honduran population. So. They have like, everyone population, man. Hey, like, they you know have, what I'm saying? Like, they yeah, showed out. I saw, I saw the Australian flags being, being like being flown around too, like on t- from the from my screen. No, no, I mean, I mean, like there was some Australian flags, but there was so many Honduran flags, I couldn't count. Like you would, <laughs> like you would have to be in Honduras to see as many Honduras flags as I saw last night. <laughs> Although the nigga, like low low key, he he don't be repping Florida like that though. Yeah, like New York and shit. That you know. I mean, I mean, no, they they bill him as Brooklyn because To Senior is 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 from Brooklyn. Yeah, and so. you yeah, need to step out of his damn father's shadows already, and you know, rep, rep where you at. I mean, you know, rep well, you. You know rep why? Yourself. Because also a lot of people. I'll tell I'll tell you what it is. Um, also a lot of people allow him to claim. Um, Brooklyn and want him to claim Brooklyn, especially because you know what I'm saying I deal with a lot of you know a lot of cats from Brooklyn, and a lot of them say you know we we claim him because you know when we talk when he talks we he he sounds like us like we hear the Brooklyn in him when he speaks so like a lot of them claim him like will allow it because they feel like the way he talks is like one of us so they let him claim Brooklyn. It's corny as fuck. Yeah, and, well, and, well, I'm just I'm just seeing some more comments. Yep. Uh, what up, Cat? I just see your comments. You know, she's oh, like, Kat. "Hope y'all had a had a good ki- had a good time." Too cold to be out there. Well, I mean, he's a soldier, though. That's the thing. Like, you know. Oh are- man, I, I was stunting in my Montclair. I I wasn't worried about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but I was I, I was I was chilling up there with Mr. Chris Algieri. He was the uh, shout out to Chris. He was he was a he was a dope cat. He straight up told me he's like. Watch, I'm a, I'm a beat, I'm a beat Connor Ben. I'm like, okay, like he's like, he told me, he told me, he told me, he's like, he has so many holes, and I'm gonna exploit all of them. So that's a confident man, though. Yeah. That's a confident man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you know, he got the skills to uh, give Ben some problems. I mean, he gave, he gave them like he says, like, because I'm, he mentioned about how he gives credit to the British market because they know how to build up and hype up their fighters I guess even when they're not that good (laughs) he didn't say that Um, but I know that's what he meant like I know that's what he meant because a guy like Conor Ben was hyped up in in the UK when he's not that good of a fighter at least yet I'm not high on him plus it doesn't doesn't help that his father is like what what, he's like the British Joey Spencer did like what is (laughs) oh no that was Josh Kelly I'm sorry yeah yeah. 
So you know what I'm saying? He was he was cool. McCaskill up there, she was cool. Rick Ramos, so they, they they was up there too. You know what I'm saying? Of course, of course they were. Notice I use the word they. <laughs> Rick was Rick was cool though. I I I I I fucked with Rick. Rick was cool. Yeah, I'm sure he's cool though, but it's always gonna be they. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always it's never gonna be she. It's gonna be they. Or he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it is what it is. They, I mean, their, their business is their business, but they was good people. Uh, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody up there was good people, so we, you know, we enjoy we enjoyed the atmosphere, you know, and watched it from from up high, and everybody with the whole crowd was was enjoying the whole really hard, but especially once it got to the main event, they they was out, they was out with full force. You yeah, heard everything. Through the, damn, the atmosphere through the TV when that main event came. Like, it was yes, just sir. over the top. Like, you could tell, like, people couldn't wait for this fight. Mm hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I got I to gotta say, I got to say, and this is just my personal opinion. I'll give Matchroom and the Zone credit for this because I, if I feel my personal opinion. I feel like if Bob Arum and Top Rank had this card, it wouldn't be like that. I don't think the atmosphere would have been like that. And I can I can see that. I can see that. I could definitely see that. And that's not a shot to Bob Arum and Top Rank, but it's just they do things differently. Yeah. And what exactly. what what, what, sure what, what Matchroom did worked for T, and it showed. They, they made it. They made it seem. They made it seem like it. You know, a big fight. You know. Well, he, what they made. What they did was fight. they actually put. You know, they actually put like videos and shit on them. Like then, like I actually was able to find videos on the Matchroom. Like Twitter or the YouTube, yeah, I actually saw. I actually promoted the hell out of that in such a short time. So I literally, I yeah. subbed to all the boxing, you know, outlets, main ones. I yesterday I subbed, you know, before the fight, I literally subbed to the Matchroom. I never knew I wasn't, I wasn't subscribed to the Matchroom channel, you know, just because there was a video playing, of t- you know, TFM or some shit. So, good so job. Good yeah, job. I mean, it, it was definitely so. You know, the atmosphere was there. I got to talk with some other guys. You know, say they was, you know, it was all cool people. Um, I ran into. You know, a, you know, a lot of people that was like, you know, in the know, in you know, I ran into somebody in Tio's camp, and he mentioned that like, you know, Tio's ready, but like, he's like, like he was, he's ready for it. He just wants this to be over with. He's gonna get him out of there, and he mentioned he he managed to slip in something about how Tio went a little bit without training, and I'm like, wait, what? Like, yeah, that's super believable though. They, I'm like, wait, like. <laughs> Like how and, and then and then I'm and then I heard after a fight somebody else told me then I heard oh he went a month without training and I'm like oh what? damn <laughs> um, which I don't I, I find that hard to believe because I'm um, like that man has to cut a serious amount of weight and you're telling me he went a month without training like how's he gonna cut that weight so I don't know if it was exaggeration but that I like I, the, once I heard that whole well you know he hasn't really been training like that. Now it's like okay. Now it's gonna make this interesting. Oh, and then also just a quick interruption. You know, shout out to Mister Out the Way. You know, salute. He, he said salute to the channel in the chat. You know, salute. Thank you for you know for tuning in and you know listening. You know, salute. You know, listening to us. You know, as we get into again to some fight talk tonight, man. Definitely, you know, we definitely salute you. you know, and uh, me. first in the fifteenth said basically definitely wasn't worth it. Bob would have made sure Camp was right with trainers and Tristan has even paid off judges if he had to. Well, truth to be told, and we'll probably get into this later on, though, some of them judges were on that bullshit, you know, but we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll wait to get more. I mean, but it. there is some truth to what he's saying, though. Like, No, he, he's right. You know, he definitely is, though. But the judges part, though, like I said, it didn't seem like, you know, it, the judges part was still stayed the same. Like, so, like, them cats was... Some of the shit was, was kind of wilding a little bit, but like I said, we'll definitely get into that part. Though well, one, one one thing I'll say this though, um, what, what P said in regards to like the atmosphere, like he don't think Top Rank would have made it as live. I, I could agree because it's like Teofimo's at that level where you expect him to have that type of Berlanga energy about him in all his fights. Like he gets a. He gets engagement from the crowd. He gets like, you know, he gets shit loud, but it don't seem like he's that damn, that next level. Like when you heard Tank in that Charlo card that one time. Right. Where like niggas losing their mind or, you know, that prime Ricky Hatton, you know, versus what Ben Tacky and niggas just like, ah, like going crazy type shit. <laughs> like no. the T.O. could definitely be there, but yeah, Matt, Matt, they good at what they do, you know, sometimes. 
Yeah, because I think Matchroom, they, they, they really are, they really do try to make a focus on their social media, but that's one thing that, I think that's one thing that Eddie does do. That's why he'd be holding these random, his events like in random locations that most people just don't, you know, don't really. That's why he'd be having auxiliary media, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> true. Like he, he, he be, like, you know, low-key, he look, he look out, because I think it's Tyrant would have had, um, what's this, they would have just made like one little preview video. Right. And you'd have just been done, but like, you, you remember that Navarrete, um, what's that, Chris, Chris Pearson, or what's that, um, that card he had in damn, um, Florida. Was, it, was that the Friday card? That was a Friday, wasn't that like a Friday I card? I think it was, but that card was fucking lit, though. It was like, lit, it was lit. It wasn't supposed to be That's the type of energy you want at a, a Tiafimo fight when, when top rank is doing it. So I, I, I get, I, I get exactly what he's saying. hmm But yeah, yeah, my bad, keep going, bro, like, that was some real shit no i mean and that's i mean uh, I, although the only thing I, I, it's funny that, that now that you mentioned uh auxiliary seats because that was probably the only thing that pissed me off was that like i didn't like everything was like i'm getting in and i don't know where i'm supposed to be like i'm oh i'm not floor seats i'm like okay so where am i oh well they'd be like i don't know with me i don't know so then i'm like oh then i, I somebody took oh you're you're try the auxiliary seats and then i went and one of them was completely blocked off he's like no you can't go here um he's like i was told this is where the media is he's like oh no that's where um it is but not this section because this section is sold out it's private it's it, it, it's privately booked try try the other one and i'll get into why that was privately booked later but yeah a, a certain a certain 160 fighter you know privatized that auxiliary spot yeah, <laughs> hmm, I wonder who it could be. I know, right? <laughs> hmm. Oh man, but shit, I did so after that you found you see you was good, and then like fast forward to the main event. <laughs> God, like I mean, <laughs> by that time everything was yo, know, we was waiting, and every time like they was showing, they was showing them on screen, so everybody started getting more anxious because they were showing them in the back showing them getting ready and every time Cambosis was shown you just hear a loud roar of booze like crazy and then Tio came on and everybody just started losing it like so it was one of those it would go back and forth boo ah boo yeah <laughs> I feel like they was doing some like slow teasing type shit like like they, they really had you wait for these niggas to really start the fight off like yeah so, I feel like that's what we're doing with the podcast right now. So y'all niggas get into this shit. But yeah, so I mean, you get into the fight, you know. Hey, it went, once the fight started, uh, you know, just came out guns blazing, and everybody was like, ah, everybody was going crazy. This is like he he was coming with it, and I'm like, okay, he's aggressive. Uh, he's not landing much, but everybody like they're just they the crowd is with it. Like, okay, let's see, let's see how far this goes. First, my first, my first ob- observation when I saw how fast he went out, I said quickly, immediately, I'm like, he's coming in wild. He's throwing, you know, lefts that aren't landing. He's just kind of like, I'm like, I, I can tell he's trying to get out of this quickly. He's trying to end this quickly. And I'm wondering, I'm like, I already know because he said he wasn't coming. Out, he wasn't going to be at 135 anymore. This would be his last fight. So I'm like, ah. Oh. He's, he's trying to get him out of there before the late rounds because I don't know if he can go that far because then the weight's going to catch up to him. Word. So, you know, he came out, the crowd was going crazy, and then next thing you know, whoop, that right, that counter right hand just dropped him, and the crowd just went, oh, like we were just like, uh-oh, uh, and it sucked the wind out of it for a little bit. But. And I can imagine because at that point I was watching it on my laptop because the Showtime card had already started, so I had it on mute. And when that shit happened, I almost threw my remote, my laptop on the floor. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh shit! I was like, I, like I, I really had to really stop myself from like, 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 like swearing in front of my father like that. I was just like, yo, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was a, hey, that was a beautiful and that was a beautiful overhead right, like to get him dropped. Yeah. Out. It, yeah, it really just came like like quickly. Like it was the surprise of it because To's lunging, trying to get, try, trying to connect, and then the next thing you know, he steps back, and the right hand just comes and just drops him. So it was a bang bang thing. So that really just shocked everybody. Yeah, so. that, that, that set the whole mood really. Yep. Was, and the other thing too is like, you know, Lopez had that look on his face, just like, yo, I just got hit with some shit. Like, 
like he, it wasn't like it wasn't no flash that kind of like I mean dude clearly was affected by that shot because dude got up you know I, I saw I saw his his I saw a little fear in his eyes I was like damn this dude just dropped me with one shot yep so I mean I, and and so I'm like okay let's see how let's see how this goes let's see how Tio responds I actually thought he did well in the second and third rounds but it was still he was still still kind of too aggressive too anxious I'm like he needs to just slow it down because he's gonna he's gonna get caught again with something he doesn't seize and who knows because in the second round um Cambosis missed on an overhand right that if he would have landed on it like he probably would have like took his lights out because he threw it with intention like every like every intention to like everything was like put into that punch and he just missed it i was I, like, yeah honestly i think every punch in that damn fight was throwing attention like that like those two like i mean they were they were, they were throwing me like those two were sitting in the pocket just winging like shots at each other like and that was the thing like you usually don't see that too often like they were winging fast shots at each other like and Cabosas was taking a lot of that shit i'm thinking to myself like damn he really has a lot of confidence in his chin to be taken to yep. but I mean in, in the early in the in the early first I would say in the first three rounds like he he wasn't taking as much yet because he wasn't really con- like Tia wasn't really connected he he was trying to connect and but he, like I could tell him like okay what's his game plan I'm like what 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 is he what is he trying to do because it didn't seem like honestly and th- like when the third round hit I'm like okay this guy doesn't have a game plan because he's not really following up on anything He's trying, like, like, he's not trying. He's trying to do horrible catch and shoots. I'm like, he's not really doing anything that's working. Like, the, the, no, there's no, no, no punishment to the body, which is what he should have been doing. It was right. Like, like no, yeah. no, nothing was going on. Like, like he was just, just trying to just get him out of there, but he wasn't doing anything to really, to p- follow up with anything. Well, once you heard his dad after the first round, you know he had no game. <laughs> well, you, I mean, once you <laughs> on the broadcast. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you probably wouldn't be able to hear, but yeah, like, you know, Senior was on there. Like, he wasn't saying shit. It was like, you know, he was saying shit. Just throw the right hand. Like, I, I thought you, I thought you get rid of Why him. Why haven't already. you knocked him out already? Stop, get him out of there. What the fuck? That Why haven't you put off, him out of there already? That was off balance. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was off balance. I didn't hear that, but that, that doesn't surprise me. By the fourth round, uh, Tio was getting boxed up. Like, boxed oh, yeah, up was badly. Bad. And because... And I, I kept saying, because I was saying to the guy that right next to me, I'm like, T.O. is clearly frustrated. And because Cambosis is doing a really good job of setting him up. He's trapping him, setting up with traps. Left, counter left hooks, right hands. He's like, he's he's going in and out. So he's not, he, he was circling around. He, he, bop, bop, out. Because T.O. was like, T.O. couldn't throw the right hand without setting his feet. And by right. the time he set his feet, Cambosis was already circled out. So yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, I see what he's doing. He's doing a good job. He's banging in two, three punches, then getting out. Because Tio is just throwing one punch. If Cambosis is going to throw two, three punches to Tio's one punch, Cambosis is going to win that exchange every time. Yeah, and the funny thing is, too, it's like Tio Fimo was, he, he was, he was resorting to lunging and running into the fucking ropes like his fucking I think wrestling. It was super anxious. Yeah. <laughs> it was anxious and then just not having any plan of any putting anything together he just just riled up for no no reason like it's like you could tell both was fighting angry mm-hmm. it was, but one guy was fighting angry with like a strategy a game plan and he was in shape or L- lopez looked a little flat but he tried to force shit and it just wasn't working man he was he was landed one punch for every four he would throw and it's it's one of those things like it's it started to feel to me like I almost laughed because I felt like it was like almost like Tio was like like trying something like it was like when you when you play a video game, especially when you play a boxing game and you got the novices that play fight night and they just like, well, okay, I'm gonna just throw the turbo button. And like just, just trying everything they can, like something different without like, okay, well this doesn't work. Okay, I'm gonna try this. And, like, I'm gonna throw the turbo. And then like Tio's like, okay, I'm a shoulder roll. I'm like, why are you shoulder rolling, bro? I think he was like, cycling through like 17 different styles. Like, dude, yeah. pick one. Like, yeah. And his I'm, shoulder yeah. roll be pissing me off. It's like, awful, awful. It's honestly, just maybe a notch, a not, maybe a half a notch better than Birdo's. Like, I, I, I wouldn't even say that. I, I wouldn't even say that. I thought his was almost as like damn near as bad as Birdo. Like, yeah, yeah. Man. You know what? You you could. Because the thing is, at least he was able to counter out of it. Like, but. 
he was getting lit up like three to one trying to jam, just do a regular shoulder roll counter so right. it, just, it was just it was just a bad game plan it kind of reminded me of anthony yard yeah he kept trying to shoulder roll for no reason and not get the left hook off yeah yep yeah, and then so- these niggas don't they don't hide they show they don't hide their chin behind the shoulder they don't get the angle right because if you're in the natural angle of the damn of your opponent the punches are supposed to naturally ride off all you're doing is just kind of rotating your hip moving rotating your shoulder chin already tucked down and protected but these niggas square up on the on the upper half and be right in front of their damn opponent trying to shoulder roll and that shit just never works the problem is a lot of these guys don't have like a lot of these guys either don't have the tools or they just use it in a completely wrong way. You know what? I, I used to joke. I used to I used to joke about Broner. I used to say, like, w- like when it came to Broner's shoulder roll, like I, I would I would use I would say Broner is the guy that has a high tech gaming computer but just uses it to browse Facebook. <laughs> That's literally like he he would and use. Tio was looking like that. Like he couldn't decide on what the fuck he wanted to do. Like he wasn't you. Like okay, if you're gonna use utilize the shoulder roll, do it properly. Do you even know how to do it properly? You're just trying to do something. Like at least like at least have a form. Have a fucking formation of what you're gonna do. Have something. He, he doesn't do. switch the hands up like a, like fast enough to when he's trying to walk the guy down like because it's like okay he would try to he would he would use this because i first i i shook my head because he used the shoulder roll and he's going forward i'm like okay so are you gonna do it like james tony and go forward with it and then he would go backwards i'm like okay pick a side and can boxes will hit him right in between yes yeah. and, and 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 round after round you can see the train marks all over Tiafimo's face, man. His and eyes were all, you no, know, were all swollen and shit. Because every punch Cam Bosers threw had mean intentions. Like mm-hmm. right. by the he eighth round, teaching him a lesson. By the eighth round, I started noticing all the marks. I'm like, dude, this dude is marked up so bad. Like both of his eyes were messed up. One of them was like, like was damn near closed. Like yeah, I can he was, tell, he, he was bleeding from his nose. Like his the blood was coming down from his nose to his mouth. You can see all this. I was like, to his okay. eyes. Yeah, he, he had a blood puss on his yeah, face. Like by the, the end of the seventh round, he went to his corner. Like he was breathing like heavy. In the I saw him in the corner. He was breathing like really, really heavy. I'm like, okay, here we go. See, this is why he wanted to get it done early because that tide is start, like it's starting to get worse and worse. I don't know how much more he could he could handle this. This is a battle of attrition, and Camosis is still fresh. Like he's he he still had a lot to give. So I'm like, okay. I mean, he, I mean, Camosis did get marked up. Like you know, he didn't. I mean, he wasn't he, he wasn't fresh. I mean, he was fresh. No, he, he was marked up too, but he still looked like the much fresher fighter than right, than, right, you know, right. He like, fought like too. Like I, yeah, he was marked up, but I'm like, okay, he could still go. I didn't know if if Teofimo could go the full twelve. At, by the by the end of the seventh, I'm like, I don't know if he can do five more of this. So, he, he started turning it around in the second half, and and then I think to me, it, I noticed it in the ninth round, that, that, the end of the eighth. At the end of the eighth, he started putting some together some shots that actually troubled Cambosis. Yeah. So, so I'm like, okay, well, let's see. Maybe, maybe he gave him something to work on. Then starting in the ninth, that to me is when the tide started turning, and he's putting, he's starting to put together his offense. And Cambosis is taking the punt, is starting to take a lot more punches. And I'm like credit to him because he's got a chin on him, and maybe he thinks, okay, I can take these punches. I don't know how much steam they had on him, but I'm like, okay, you know, let's let's see if Tail can do something with this. And then in the tenth, whack, that he dropped him like, he, like just went straight down i'm like oh shit and he was hurt like it was no flash no nothing he was he was with cambosis was legitimately hurt and when he, came, yeah, he was hurt he was at dead to run he came up he like he was wobbly a little bit i'm like okay this is the time to get on him now and tail Fimo tried to get on him but it just i don't know if he just didn't have enough because i felt like he kind of punched himself out or I, I, uh, cambosis survived cambosis did a great job of surviving that he did. He, he just like he just couldn't muster enough offense to just put him away, and that's where I said the game planning was all messed up because it was just he had he even when he did something well and he had success with something, he didn't follow it up with it. I'm 
like, I okay. mean, but he ain't put in no body work investment either. So that's what I'm saying. And then like I'm noticing like in the in the eighth round, like I, I didn't notice. I didn't start noticing body punches until like the eighth round. I'm like, why are <laughs> body punches in the eighth, like round eight? That this should be done in round two, starting round two. Yeah, right. they, yeah, they were, they were just swinging headshots at each other. Like that, that's what I was all about. Like, like how many combinations of can I land on your head? <laughs> Yeah, so the body it was, was a, body was not a factor like that. So yeah, it was not. But okay, he, he he finally got to him. He was hurt. I'm like, okay, now we re- now everybody the crowd is going crazy. You know, what I'm saying we got we got we really got a fight on our hands. And I think my um, on my personal scorecard at that at the end of the tenth, I actually had it tied at the end of the tenth. Um, well, and now I'm like, okay, we got a fight. Now these the championship rounds. Let's see if Tails a champion. Now he's he's got to do something these last uh, these last two rounds. And to Cambosis' credit, he survived. He 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 uh, he refreshed and he went back to boxing him up because Tail was just trying to do spam the left hook and he wasn't he, it wasn't landing. He was just spamming punches that had no effect because they no didn't land flush yeah, no or I don't know if they hadn't have any steam on him, but he just it wasn't working. And, so, and on top of that too, like he opened up a mean cut yep. with his left eye, like yep. like yeah, he, like he started he started bleeding like a stuck pig. Like I mean, that's why this is where Cambosis showed his level. Like Cambosis bit down on his mouth guard and was like, you know what? Let me let me go put this away. He wanted it more than T- you. Yeah, he, he could and, taste the champion. Like like like, like Cambosis landed like four lefts, like four lefts, like some like not in a row but like all of them landed successfully and i'm like you would think that teal would like guard against that because he's like now he's getting confident and he's throwing that left like i can do something and teal just like just went forward like hands down and getting hit with all of them i'm like see now you you, you had a chance to finish this and yeah, now he, now you just you basically lost the fight yeah, so I, I heard the, the 12th round he got once again and I, a lot of people boo because they thought like okay because the doc the doctor came and had to check a look at Teal Fee and the crowd was not having it they were booing and like you know they're checking him he's like okay you ready to go because everybody was happy that they didn't stop it because whenever you see somebody a doctor getting doctor checking up on a fighter you're always ready for the fuckery but they let him go and Teal then got work the rest of the 12th round. <laughs> he did. Sure did. <laughs> um, and it was a you know, at the end, everybody was up. Everybody was everybody was waiting to see what the scorecards were gonna be. You know, I was talking to some of the boys up there. You know, we all had our opinions. Um, and I personally scored it like before the announcement, I said I have it 115, 112 for um for uh Cambosis. I felt Cambosis won. He was the right man to win, but I'm like, okay, let's see what the judges say. And it was a little, it took a little time. And you, you, we all, we all know how that goes. When the longer, the longer it takes to read the scorecards, then you know there's going to be some fuckery in front. Of course. So, literally, David Diamante says, "Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision." I'm like, okay, here we go. And the crowd is just on edge, you know. First person scored it for, you know, Cambosis. Second judge scored it for Teofimo. And then, and see, this is the funny part because you could tell, like, this is where I can tell that, I mean, I knew this off bat, but like this just like showed that like the, um, the crowd really was there for Teo. They didn't really, like, they didn't really know much about Cambosis. So when they said 115, 112 to the winner, and still undefeated, everybody started cheering because yeah, yeah. everybody thought they were talking about Tino. I'm like, wait a minute, uh, yeah, is undefeated, undefeated too. Undefeated too. Yeah. I, wait, yeah. I said that like in succession afterwards. Oh, he's uh, Kimbos is undefeated too. And then right afterwards, and new, and everybody just started booing. Like it was like they all cheered. It was the fake cheer, and then it was just boo. Like they never, yeah, <laughs> the crowd was raining down. It was. They felt like it was a bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> so motherfuckers was mad i went down uh i saw uh, i think it had, it had to be tio's family because a little girl was they were going out crying like yeah it was, it was not a not a happy it, it had to be the, the tio's camp like tio's niece or something like that because they were cry they were crying so yeah, that that ending was not good for them. And I'm like, okay, you know, the right man won. I'm happy, you know, they fought their hats off. 
hats off to both of them. And I'm saying, let's see what they have to say. Yeah, I was gonna say this, this is gonna be interesting. And you know, I'm saying, let's see how Teofimo responds. And then this dumb motherfucker is like, oh well, you know, I want to make excuses, but you know, I thought I won the fight. The, the, right. the judge, you know, <laughs> the, the, the ref, no, you know, say I won ten two, and I'm just like, like everybody just started booing when he said I won ten to two. Now I was like, now you're making an ass out of yourself, Lopez. Like, what's wrong with you? Like everybody just looked at him like, ah, nah. Like he did worse than that was worse than AB to me. Like that, that to me was yeah, legitimately yeah. worse yeah. than AB. It's like that you felt embarrassed for him. Like, damn, bro. Like. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you take that and, and you know graciously to some degree, you know, but you, you, you lose a lot of points with that kind of shit. Right, but then he's like, "Well, um, I'm not trying to make excuses," and then he just starts rolling <laughs> off excuses. I'm like, "Okay, here we go. Like, what what are we doing? Like, come on now." And it was funny because um, I said this to somebody there, and he got a, he got a kick out of it. I said, "I'm like, you know, this is the same person that." called Wilder a bitch for making all those excuses and now you're crying just as bad as he was Mm -hmm. like what is wrong with you like you hate to see it but you love to see it he gotta get his uh, medicine that's his comeuppance yep I mean that's it the the cypher got completed man cypher and and then afterwards somebody was like oh well somebody told me he's like you know you know he didn't you know he wasn't really training and then his oh his wife left him and I'm just like oh boy yo yo, yo what's the shit about his wife divorced him now I yeah I I really don't know much about that but I did hear that they were having issues but I don't know like their the whole dynamics of their relationship but I remember somebody said that they were having like marital he was having marital problems I didn't know that his wife left him. Yeah, uh, I mean, like before, uh, like there was, stuff, there was stuff before where the family wasn't really for the for the woman that she yeah. that he eventually married. And then in, on one of the videos that Matchroom put out, Tia Fimo did touch upon it briefly that you know she wasn't with this baby mom anymore, and that's and that's what he left it at. So, so yeah, you know, I, like, I knew they had issue, but I didn't know they had. Well, I thought he, I thought they were married. No, yeah, they nah, were they married. Not married, yo. Married. Shit, his kid recently, right? Too. Yeah, that yeah, might be. He just had a pictures on Instagram and shit. No, I mean, it was, it was kind of funny. Someone, I mean, what he said. And, and he didn't want to. And he didn't like. I remember Bob Aram saying he didn't want to have to fight after October because he wanted to because his his wife was giving birth and he wanted to be there to take you know for his kid. So like yeah, I, I remember hearing that as well. Yeah. Everything was just weird. All the excuses. There were people. Then I talked to people. Well, I thought I thought Lopez won. And I'm like, wait, seriously? Like so, now? Nah. Oh, well, you know, it should have been a draw. And I'm just like, oh lord, nah, that would have been a robbery too. So I'm like, okay, here comes the excuses. Here comes all the people taking up for him. And it's just like, yeah, I mean, we gonna get the reverse Lomachenko vibe that niggas have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember right. when T.O.B. Loma, you got motherfuckers like, oh, nah, you know, that, was, that could have gone either way. It was close. Huh? Nah, I mean, let, let's let's be honest. Let's be honest. I mean, T.O., I think T.O. got a lot of the benefit of the doubt for a lot of the stuff, like with the recent stuff, you know, because of the goodwill he built up with the Loma win. But I can yeah. tell you all of that goodwill just evaporated, like, yeah, of course. Like that. That's just a wrap. Yeah, I mean, dude. I mean, dude was living like dude was living absolutely. Like, I mean, I think this, the longer that the fight did come off, you can tell that dude was start, you know, starting to get into different type of behavior. It's like, you know, like just like you know, if a dude showed up there and had his, and it was displaying his belts, and then you saw a lot of the shit going on with senior gay being off in the videos and shit like that. Like, yeah, like I mean, there was there was a lot, and, and there was a lot of not, and this is just adding on to stuff that actually led to all these delays like the COVID fuckery and didn't want to go to Australia and the thriller shit and you know it, it, yeah I mean the box of gods showed out just you know showed out last night you know what I mean like you know it, it you know it was only like something like this was only gonna could only end in pure unadulterated fuckery you know and then like I said and, I, and, and like I said enough respect to George Cambosis because like I said because I know when we actually did preview this fight like months ago, at least like six months ago, like none of us didn't really think that Cambosis was going to win this fight. <laughs> you know, I, 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 actually, I'm the only one that didn't pick a knockout. I picked a decision for for Tia. I, I gave him enough respect to give him the decision to give to say that Cambosis would go the distance. No. But yeah, so you know, 
He's, yeah, he spent all that time training, man. You know, so his eyes. Yeah, you know, you know, it's yeah. funny because in that poll that we did, the, the reason why I'm not really, really surprised because remember the poll we did um, of you know which of these fighters has the uh, the most, the, the biggest, the best chance to pull off the upset. I actually voted for Cambosis, so I was like, oh, I ended up being right. Right, and I think I think I think all, I think all of us acknowledge too that all the fuckery that was going on at the time that we did, because we did, we also did a podcast on that too. We also acknowledge too that because all the fuckery that was happening, that it was a bigger chance of that happening. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, we all gave Camp Osis his props, though his respect. Like he, you know, none of us said he didn't earn the fight. He definitely yeah. earned the fight. He earned that fight. He definitely was a live underdog. And honestly, we spoke more highly about him than fucking Sandor Martin, really. That's, well, yeah. well and that's funny because I had a conversation with somebody there and we had that debate of um, which was the bigger upset. And I personally, I think the Sandor Martin is the bigger oh, upset. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. It's still this. Definitely. Definitely. But there were people that like, oh, question. there were people that like, that were like, oh, no, this is a bigger upset. Because one, one of the guys was like, He's like, to be honest with you, I never thought much of Cambosis. I didn't think he looked great even in the Selby win. I thought Teal was going to run him over. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean Loma's not, Loma, I mean, no, no, uh, Lopez isn't unbeatable. I mean, he, to me, he was never unbeatable, but to see a guy that, you know, struggled against Selby take a zero, I didn't expect that either, so. Right. I don't see Cambosis really struggle with Selby. Like, he kind of beat him clearly, right? Like, it was was a, a, to me, it was a it was a close fight. It was, it was well, yeah, I, like I guess I mean, it was competitive. It was close, but like there were people Selby would have won that shit. It would have been people, a robbery. There, there were people that felt like it shouldn't have been as competitive as it that, was. Yeah, basically, yeah, that. But Selby's a former champion, so now we underrating him. And the funny thing is too is like I just yeah, know. I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not. Un- I mean, it's not that we're down on Selby, I, and, and I don't feel that way. But a lot of people feel like Selby by that point is Selby has seen better days and is uh, two weight divisions past his prime. Yeah. So yeah, both of us. I can see that. Man. Yeah, and, a bit. and then I'm just reading the comments that first and fifteen said he actually had the Selby fight a draw. And, we, and like I said, truthfully, like I said, it, that fight was closer than most picks. It wasn't, like I said, a clear cut win. And that was the fact that was Cambosis is like, he's been three champions in a row so far, but they've all been split decision wins. Like, you know, but the Selby fight is probably the only fight that probably could be a draw or a split decision yeah, or and, anything and, like and that nature. And I mean, they were, they were helping the Mickey Bay win too. I mean, Mickey Bay was just way past it and they were hyping up that yeah. one. So, you know. Yeah. You know, but but the, but at least with the TFL, like the, the, like this fight, the TFL fight should have never been a split decision, because two of the judges, including the one that actually that had the for TFL Lopez, didn't score the first round 10-8 for for Cambosis. They did 10-9. So it's like you know, it was, ah, that's I mean, I mean, ah, see there, I, I mean. I, I don't agree with that because me personally, if you get the knockdown, I'm scoring it 10-8. But there are some people that feel like if you score, like if you're getting, if you're losing, you know, three-fourths of the fight and then you just happen to get a knockdown, that you shouldn't be guaranteed a 10-8 round. Nah, that's bullshit. Nah. Yeah, nah, nah. The only way I give you a 10-9 if you get a knockdown in a, in a round, if the guy was really beating the shit out of you and he didn't drop you. Right. But you end up dropping him, then yeah, that might be a 10 9. But you no, know, me personally, if you get the if, if you if you drop the person, you're getting a 10 8 round. I don't play with exactly. you. No, I feel you. I'm, but look, I'm talking about this is the level of beating I'm talking about. I'm talking about Brewster Klitschko type of beating. I'm talking about a clear, like, a nigga's about to go, like, you should have gone down. Like, you're almost out on your feet, and then you throw one of those Kendall Holt punches and you clip <laughs> a guy. Like it's hard for me to fucking give you a ten eight. <laughs> I get it. If I you, get it. If you took like the a fucking roadhouse ass whooping for damn, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Two minutes and forty seconds. <laughs> but but that, that but remember that's that's a rare case though. That's a rare that that happens like one every fifty fights, right? We're, we're probably due for one actually. Right, but the Cambosis shit though was definitely yeah, that's definitely definitely been, fucking ten eight. And, 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 and the fact is that in the judges for for Lopez one, it was the, all two the, two judges scored him, gave him the 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 twelfth round, and he lost the twelfth round. Oh yeah, yeah, that was, was on that well, was. Yeah, so yeah, the, the judges really tried. They, they want no more upsets on match rules. 
<laughs> they 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 tried, you know, bless their heart. They tried. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it, but like I said, if the cards were scored right, it should have been a majority decision for Cambosis. You know, truth. You know, if it would have been a fucking uh, unanimous decision, really. Yeah, that was the best yeah. unanimous decision. Like, like honestly, let's let's be honest. Like, Teofimo won like maybe four rounds. Yeah. And, like you know, five at the most, but yeah. it's almost like the Loma he fight. Won, he, won, he won four. He won four rounds. That's it. That's, that's how it's many like, rounds like, like, you can. You can give like Loma one, like maybe like four rounds at the most five, but you're giving them the benefit of the doubt after that. Like even a draw is like, come on, and and damn, if you have him winning, oh lord, like you you ain't watched the fight. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Shit. So that that's how I feel like this. Shit is almost like a. All's wells that ends well, you know. You, you got to take the sport serious. Um, I know we all got problems and shit going on, but man, I mean, Cambosis had his own like you. he he Cambosis had his own problems and he made it work. Cause, you know, he he, he had his, his 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 grandfather that passed. He was having like you know he he had he wanted to be with his wife, all that. So he's like, you know, I'm yeah. I'm gonna go home now. You know, I'm I'm gonna go home. I'm very my. Um, bury my give my uh, grandfather a proper burial. I'm like, okay, okay, you know what I'm saying? Talk your then he's talking his shit. Say, like, you know, you got the four kings. Well, I'm the emperor. I'm like, okay, yeah, he's, okay, yeah, he's talk, that shit. Talk. Yeah. talk that talk. And so, I like that. Like, he, he has switched the whole dynamic. Like, you gotta come to fucking Australia. Like, 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 yeah, that's he's like, right. Like, come and down here, motherfucker. You want, you want this word? Uh, out yeah. Afterwards, that is where the fun started because, uh, I was I was I was laughing because I'm like, oh well, what do you know? Lou DeBella has another champion, and when Lou DeBella has a champion, you know how things get a little interesting, right? Because we know how Lou is. <laughs> yeah, Lou, Lou doesn't Lou doesn't want to feel like he needs to be forced into anything without him actually really going over how many going over the choices that he yep. has now. So I um so first off I was trying you know trying to speak to Cambosis but Cambosis got exited quickly and he had to like Te- Teo was nowhere to be found he went immediately away like like out of sight like 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 the Broner shit where Broner after we lost to Maidana went straight out like no you ain't see the peep uh he he later found out he went to the hospital both of them went to the hospital Cambosis um was dehydrated and Teo had to get some stitches so. They weren't really available to talk afterwards. But. Some are a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> some uh, some yeah. stitches are a lot, a lot of stitches. Uh, a, a lot of stitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, so you know, m- myself and a couple other people, a lot of people actually spoke to Lou, and uh, I can't tell you how many times Devin Haney was mentioned. Like that, I, I, to the point where like. He's visibly starting to get annoyed at because I'm like, okay, now Devin Haney's got to be licking his chops, and Hearn's Hearn's gonna want to push uh, the Devin Haney fight to get it under, to get it actual undisputed. And Lou basically was just like, he got to the point where I feel like he was asked too many times that he just went off. He was just like, listen, um, we I, much respect to Devin Haney, but we don't fucking need Devin Haney. He needs us more than we need him. I'm sorry y'all acting like we gotta we have to fight him. We don't have to do shit for him. I'm like, damn, okay. Like he's I mean, making it facts though. He's and I'm like, listen, he's like, you know, I understand the belt situation, but at the end of the day, Loma dropped the belt. I get it. But at the end of the day, Loma was still the man. He didn't beat the man. Teo beat the man, so he's the man. And now Cambosis beat Teo, so Cambosis is the man. So we run this division. Like, I mean, that, that's facts, though. Yeah, I mean, I had no problem with it, but I, I like, he's like, you know, we're, we're gonna take the rest of the year off, we're gonna reconvene, and we're gonna see how things, we're gonna survey the landscape, and we're gonna see what's available, and we're gonna make the best, I'm gonna make the best decision for George. What's best for George, not what's best for Haney, not what's best for anybody else, what's best for George. Right. So it sounds well, like he's gonna boxing is a is a Ryan Garcia fight. So he it sounds like he's gonna uh he's gonna sell um Haney to the highest bidder. Cause he was like, he asked me, he's like, how many tickets does Haney sell? I'm like, oh <laughs> like oh, damn. what bus does oh. he put in the seat? Like <laughs> I'm like, oh damn. I mean, I can't argue. <laughs> he's like, he doesn't sell pay-per-views. So like mm. it's just it, 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 it was obvious that he was getting annoyed with the like because when when you're pushing that 
enough it's like now you make it seem like like that teal that that haney holds the card and and he ain't even winning his fight yet man. yeah Niggas exactly. already, like giving exactly. him an auto win like come on exactly so, so lou, lou put some fire on that so it's going to be interesting to see who he fights but we're, we're gonna see after after next week we're gonna see how everything goes Right, no, you know, I got a, I got a. Oh my bad, I had a question I was gonna ask King P, but um, I, I know up? what it is, so you could go ahead. No, what's up? What, what, what were you gonna ask? Oh, go ahead. Nah, you could. Oh, all right, fuck it. Um, I earlier before you, you, you arrived, like you know, in the pre five banter shit, I was saying like, um, we talked about the whole highest bidder shit, and damn, I'm high. Were you here or were you not? I was um, not. I wasn't here. Oh, for he, was, he wasn't. He wasn't here for it. I, I know. I know the question you're gonna ask. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we were saying like like everybody's gonna have to come down to Australia to fight him. I was mm-hmm. saying Tank is the only one who could bring uh what's his name Cambosis to Vegas or or the back to the U S. Ab- yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, Atlanta. I think I think Tank gives him could give him the biggest payday because Tank is the is the biggest money fight. But at the same time, here's the thing, and this was confirmed to me by PBC people, no names, but I'm just going to say this was confirmed, that t- Mayweather, Mayweather Promotions isn't going to overpay for, for Cambosis because they don't care about the belts, they care about the names. So they're not going to shell out money just to give him just, just, just to give him that fight when he's not a name. Yeah, he has the belts, but they're not looking at belts. See, my, my argument to that is, I feel like Tank should, but not because of Cambosis and not because of the belts, not for those reasons directly. Me personally, if I'm t- if I'm Tank, I make that fight. I pay for Cambosis because you're you're what you're really paying for is you're paying for control of the lightweight division. If you yep. pay for that fight and you beat Cambosis and you get three belts, you run that division and every you're putting everybody else. Uh, Loma, Haney, Ryan Garcia You're putting them all in positions Where now they have to come see you And you hold all the cards You're the money, money, money man right there So but see, hold on. He, He's already the money, money man But I feel like what, what what King P is saying is like like Tank has a gun But fighting Cambosis will give him another loaded gun <laughs> Right Absolutely But I just don't because of how you know, LRB and Mayweather operate. I don't see him overpaying for uh, for Cambosis. I think at the end of it, if you ask me personally, I think it's going to be Haney because Hearn understands that Haney needs this fight. Haney needs this fight to just to, like Andre needed some fights. Yes. Yeah. So they're going to overpay because that's how much Haney needs this fight. Yeah. So I think yeah, it's going to be Haney. I'm yeah. telling you, Ryan Haney Garcia going to end up with the fight. <laughs> and, 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 and that's what I was, I was talking about. Or that's what I was about to mention before. Because, like I said, because Cambos is in the position right now because he's not contractually bound to any platform. He can move how he pleases. He's politically, he's he's, he's clear. So that's the reason why you know that, that's why like on the Twitter you have Shakur, and Jojo Diaz, and Devin talking all proper and say, "Hey, congratulations, champ!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is like- Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia, and, and Cambos has made it. Cambos has made it clear you want me you're gonna have to come to australia and it doesn't seem like him and his team are budging on that because yeah yeah, 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 his father said the same thing and i can tell when people are bsing but i did hear cambosis say that himself and it seemed like he meant it yeah and then also too hearn said it too because he said he wanted to make the fight with haney for all the belts provided haney actually wins this fight he said it was either gonna be vegas or australia so yeah Uh, yeah move out of the way uh tim to yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I, I, y'all I, I, throw I, 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 bridges on the fight and on, on the oh, card. Shit. Y'all got yourselves a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. Like you know, I fell asleep for that zoo fight, but four o'clock in the morning, I'll be up for that joint for sure. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I don't think I think I think they'll actually do it. <sighs> I mean, I don't know what time we do it, but I don't think it'll, it'll, it'll be waking up at four o'clock in the morning. I think it'll. Probably no, be they up. will. They will do it in a time where everybody can see it. To be hard, but they'll do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll probably wake up at seven o'clock in the morning to do it. <laughs> 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 but yo, um, the answer, uh, first and fifteenth. The reason why I feel like they could overpay for Ryan Garcia 
because that's such a I believe they'll think that's a, such a beatable fight like a winnable fight for Ryan Garcia because they'll they'll probably because the, the way I look at that fight Ryan Garcia flat footed as fuck and um Ken Bosa's will have to take the initiative and he's gonna have to get in there and get in range to really be landing on Ryan Garcia in and out and when he's doing that, he's taking a risk because Ryan counter Ryan Ryan Garcia's counter punch, especially the left hook, are like deadly accurate. And he'll probably clip Cambosas in one of those exchanges, and that's all she wrote. Well, and I, I mean, feel like that's the biggest way to get Ryan Garcia at the top of the division after so much bullshit that he put the public through and all this hit and miss. Cause it don't look like he's ever gonna fight uh, Devin Haney. Yeah, Haney. Nah. He's not gonna fucking fight. He's only gonna fight JoJo if JoJo wins. And and yeah. honestly, I don't. I'm not even sure he would do that. Cause then he might be spooked by JoJo if, if, if he's JoJo. Not, like, he's, not, he's, he's not reliable right now. So we that's what I'm saying. Like that's what I'm saying. Like Oscar. Oscar was trying to make a big move for next year. And get everybody in some bigger fights because this was the year that got everybody on that on the world level. Like Ortiz stepped up, Mungi is more popular than ever. Fucking Virgil Ortiz, same thing. You need a big move for Ryan Garcia. I'm just saying yeah, business yeah. wise, you overpay for Ryan Garcia and you send his little ass down there to Australia. I'm telling you, that might be the play, and it will be on the zone anyway. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think I mean I think honestly that fight is more realistic than y'all think because then because look at the after value <clears throat> Ryan Garcia controls everything the, then now the situation is in reverse Devin well, has to fucking go to damn Ryan Garcia because Ryan Garcia gonna have three bells and Devin is he, he close to any man or any man you know for any of those belts is he close to being the Mando at all or no I don't even fucking know the, the rankings for. I think Loma is a Mando is, is close to being a Mando for two of those belts. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, 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 honestly, if it only happens if 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 an org does not call a you know call for a Mando to be done, and well, I don't. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't think right now. I mean, I mean, which is, it might be too early, but I don't. I don't think. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, right now, I think he's clear on that too. Like I mean, I mean, like, like I think Eddie Hearn. I think it all really all depends on because right now everything, whatever future move that gets made in terms of how much the, the zone Eddie want to really shell out or offer Cambosis really depends on what Devin Haney does. Like if De- De- Devin Haney has an assignment that he needs to pass with the flying yeah. colors, like he like he like he do like in order to build interest, you gotta. You got you got to put away somebody. Like you got to. Yeah, they got to look at it too. If, if Devin Henney passes the test, how good does he look? Does he good enough? Does he look good enough? Where you're like, man, fuck it, I take that risk. Like I beat it. Yeah, yeah. Or does he look too good? Where you're like, Hold I don't on, know. Man. I, I just feel what, like I, I take this Ryan Garcia who's been out for a whole year, <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> coming off you. an injury. I hear you. by Luke Campbell. <laughs> I, I hear you. I just feel like, and the feeling that I get from that camp, from that side, from that team, is that they feel like they kind of have Hearn at the balls right now. Because Hearn do. is desperate. Yeah, of course. So, you like, my Haney, Haney got Hearn desperate, right? Like they, they, yes, Haney and, and Haney has has him desperate, which means that Cambosis has his team has ha, can benefits from that because they have a, a situation where they're dictating the terms because it's like you either you you agree to our terms or you just. But then they, not, what if they tired of hearing the word Haney though? Yeah, well, I'm looking at Garcia's only. Other than the ring, he's only close. To, he's only right behind Lomachenko for the WBC rankings. He's nowhere near on any That's other. Top oh yeah, so uh, it's the but, biggest leapfrog. I'm telling you. But here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, I mean, shit. Yeah. This is something where I'm wondering about Lomachenko and that, like, because I know I'm like, well, because first my first thought was, ah, uh, ornery old man isn't going to spend that much money. He but is. then again, there are times where. Aram does overpay because we've seen when he wants to, he can overpay for fights. You know, giving Khan five million, giving Kelbrook three million. This could be a fight where I wouldn't put past Aram to overpay. 
for Loma. Yeah, yeah. We 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 yeah, we forgot all about Bob. Yeah. I could definitely see them. <laughs> Might do six million. <laughs> Fuck it, and then Tio gonna be like so angry. Yep. Yeah, but like, like, it, but it's good to know that. Like, but it's 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 nice to see a fighter that can really control, like you know who who got it, you know, who got it from the dirt, like you know he he, you know he worked his way up, and you know Australia is not like you know like world you know world ranked box from Australia is not really a thing, and the fact that Cambos is really you know was able to score an upset of this magnitude. You know, and now he, he, he now he's the man in his division. I'll, you know, I'll tell you who would, I'll tell you who would love to be in Cambosis's position right now in his own division, Mister Demetrius Andre. Oh, oh yes. yeah, yeah, get in, get into that so we could uh, transition into the other fights. Okay, yeah. yeah. So real quickly, you know, Ring Gang, you know, got a got our own video on on YouTube, so go check it out. Uh, you know, and on the uh, website. Yep, Ring Gang Radio. Like on Twitter. Yep, on Twitter. Twitter it's on Facebook too. Yep, on Facebook too. Um, we were able to catch up with uh, one Demetrius Boo Boo Andre, and like I mentioned before, you know that that auxiliary section that was private was for him because he was up there and he was he was telling the fans, "Y'all need to start putting pressure, you know, on, on these promoters and on these fighters because they need to get in the ring with me." And let me tell you, the crowd was not trying to hear that; they were booing the shit out. Of like, like he was getting that fuck you go home type heat. Right. So, he so I wonder how much that section cost. I have no idea. But you know, caught up to him afterwards and you know, on the video, it's right there. He's explaining. He's he's like, listen, that's y'all job. Like, like I understand, like, like the fan, it's what the fans want. Y'all can't y'all can't say y'all want to see the best fight the best and then not want to see these guys fight Andre. Like y'all, y'all need to stop that. It's like y'all are afraid of these promoters saying, "Well, you can't ask these questions because if you do, we'll ban you." And so you let them just say whatever they want to say and let them run with that narrative instead of taking control of that narrative. He looked at me and he said, "Instead of at, like, instead of just listening to Canelo say, oh, well, Andre is a horrible, horrible fighter.' No, ask him why is he a horrible fighter. Challenge him for it, but nobody wants to challenge them for it." We, 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 everybody knows he's, he's, right right now. Now. he's not a horrible he's not a horrible fighter so you know that's a that's a bullshit reason he's, no, everybody, know it's, everybody know it's bullshit but everybody just laughing with the joke which which is low-key some whole shit you know I, I get the first 10 seconds laugh but yeah the, the running meme running joke like it's a fucking sitcom kind of gets stale so yeah exactly. I see where Andre's coming from he he has a he has a great point but it just come off corny man like Give 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 Briggs the bag. Get some fly content creator, somebody to create this buzz for you organically or something. Cause now it just comes off like you're like you begging. Like you're like I'm the cool kid. I got the new Jays, the new basketball, the new PlayStation. This this that. Like how come y'all won't play with me at my house, man? Like I mean, I mean, and he was he was he was getting frustrated even like after the cam- even after the camera was off. He was obviously he was getting even more frustrated because he's like like people are asking him well you know what do you like he was saying these these problems he's like well what are you doing about the situation he's like what do you think i'm doing what do you think i'm here for what do you think i what do you think i'm telling you telling you this stuff for like he was he was definitely he was definitely getting very annoyed but that's the thing it's like boxing media reach is only so big like you have to get something that's outside of that because honestly casual boxing fans just know him as payday Yep, he yeah, needs to, he yeah. needs to control the narrative switch. You need a new name now, bro. Like, you you, you need something else, man. Like, I'm telling him, like my my thing was my thing with Andre was, and um, he was like when when we were asking him, well, you know, who do you want? Do you have a certain preference? And like, is there someone in specific that you want? And he's like, no, line them all up. I get that, but that's generic talk. That just tells you you don't really have a plan together. Pick somebody that you think that you can reasonably get the fight with. And focus in on them. Thank you. Yeah, like, set, like, target somebody you can't just all go to target everybody honestly he set up perfectly to target mungia like they should run a whole campaign to shame mungia he mentioned it he's like mungia mungia has been my mandatory for for years now 
Right. But he, the whole, this is, the problem is with Andre, the whole world has to know this. Not just boxing fans. Not just the niggas who, you know, the zone the subscribers. Not, not niggas on YouTube comments and, and message boards. Like, the whole world, the whole, better yet, fucking Mexico needs to know that Mungi has been your mandatory and he's been avoiding you. Right. He has to do that type of campaign. Like, him speaking to the same people. It's like, look, <clears throat> to keep it real, and, you know, just objective, you know how we always complain about, like, and, and shit. We, we big up women's boxing probably more than any other podcast or platform out there, first of all. Yep. Word. But you know how we always be like, well, damn, man, you know, the women that complain about not being paid as much as the men, they need to start creating more women fans and crossing over into more women shit and kind of draw more casual women viewers out. Right. That. Same thing Andre has to do right now. Like, like boxing fans, we know him. And the casual boxing fans who kind of know him just know him as payday. Like, we, we get it. Like, you know, put something else in it. Like, focus on Mungia and change the narrative. Like, all I'm saying, be the one like, look, man, like, you're not Canelo level yet. You haven't done anything to avoid me to say I'm like, just switch yeah. the fucking narrative. Because the Canelo. only way he'll ever get a Canelo fight or closer to a Canelo fight, I feel like he has to beat a Mungia and drive it in the Canelo face on some. Yeah, I beat the up and coming Mexican star. Like, yeah. he wasn't ready for me, man. But, like, what's good with you? Like, Something man, because Canelo's never gonna fight up. Yeah, it's just like nah, Canelo. I, 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 don't, I don't think he will, but yeah. I know he has that that little hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's the only that's the only move that could go in toward that direction. Even with the Charlo fight, like, but Mungi is the easiest thing to make. Like, goddamn, like, focus on one nigga. Stop bringing up Charlo and Triple G. Like, absolutely, because he because me- he mentioned both chart like he's like. Because somebody mentioned, was like, well, you know, would you bring, would you want to, would you bring up somebody from 147 and 154? And he just looked at the 147 thing, like, nobody's coming it's up to, Crawford. yeah, nobody's coming, no, Crawford's not coming up to, to fight me. And he mentioned the, the Charlo thing, like, like, little, like, J- Jamel Charlo from 154. And I'm just like, there, like, do I want to tell him that Charlo's not going to fight him because he still holds a grudge against him for the 2014 shit? Because that might flip him off even more at that point. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to be damn, uh, he going to see you as Luke Keeler or one of them jobbers he, he beat up on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to get quickly, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> but, you know, that's about it. Hit you with Liam Wilson, uh, Williams that- uppercut. But that's about it. That was all in all. It was a great night of boxing. It was great, great card to cover. Great main event to cover. It was good to interact to you know get some of these guys' thoughts and their views. So you know, it, Ring Gang was definitely definitely thankful to be in the house last night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it showed out. And in my case, like I said, you know, that was that, that probably replaced that, that fight by is probably my leading fight of the year candidate for sure for now. Yeah, because like I say, it, 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 yeah. it, although, it, although although a lot of people thought the other fight was better. Mm. Ah. <laughs> 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 that makes for a perfect segue. <laughs> ha ha ha! Yes, you know, at the same time, because you know, boxing, you know, boxing promos are funny like that. <laughs>